I know it's been much anticipated, but that engine is finally in that frame. I'm gonna go over a few extra stuff on that for the next video once I get that axle in there to show you full bump, you'll be able to see the long arms. But just like the thumbnail, I wanna go over these new long arm brackets that I've made. I do have the driver's side in the frame right now, so I can kind of give you an idea. But there's the old bracket bolted up, and then that's what the new one looks like from this side. Going over that old bracket, this is the same thing I bolted up on the passenger side frame right now, but I've been running these for way too long. It's a pretty simple design, maybe designed by a third grader, who knows. But this is all 3 8 plate on this main body and on this lower bracket. This part is quarter inch. I never had any issues. It lasted me fine. There's no cracks in the weld. Powder coat obviously is what the hell, but everything else is totally fine for as chintzy as this is. Like it has this big horrible cutout on the top here. Uh, but I wanted to design everything with the new axle, with the new suspension, with the new steering. I needed something better on the brackets themselves. So what that design looks like is right here. This is what I came up with. Uh, I wanted to overbuild it. So you're probably looking at this thinking like, man, there's just so much reinforcement. That's what I wanted though. I wanted to be able to jump this truck off of a cliff and these brackets aren't harmed. It mainly goes to the frame, I guess. Uh, but going to a few changes I've made, this is going to use the standard Johnny joint where those ones used a three and a quarter inch wide joint. This is just a two and five eight. So standard joint there. And I did want to make this to where I could sell these kits down the line. There does seem to be a hole in the off-road Dodge part where no one offers, no good company offers a hundred percent bolt on long arm kit. So that was kind of the idea around here, even though I'll probably weld these onto the frame still. But one of the things that you need, or I needed to address is like on that bracket, it did utilize two bolts that go through the box section of the frame. And if you have any bolts going through a box section, you need to put some kind of crush sleeve in here. So this design will utilize crush sleeves on those front bolts because this is what's going through the box frame. If you don't have a crush sleeve on a box section of the frame, those frame rails are gonna move and give some under just extreme pressures. And that's gonna take the torque load off the bolt. They, they can loosen up. You, not going to really get a great torque reading when you're torquing down those bolts anyways so you really need to have always crush sleeves in any box section of any kind of structure so i'll be going there you have two bolts on the back side and then this design also utilizes a bolt there and a bolt here so you have six bolts all together completely snugging this up against the frame making sure it's extremely strong this whole design is using quarter inch plate except this plate on this side, on the other side as well, and then this weld washer, those are 316s, just to make sure that these bolt holes are not gonna oval out. The design itself, I do have the upper arm offset from the main body. There is two purposes to that. One is to make installation super easy. You can just put a wrench on this side, hold that nut in place while you torque it on there. Eventually, I'm gonna put skid plates all under the bottom, and for some reason, if I needed to take a joint out, take an arm out, say something was going wrong, I don't have to remove the, the skid plates themselves. I can just fit a wrench in there. The other thing is if I'm gonna have bolts on here that are already angled to match the angle of the cross member in the frame, they're sticking out a little bit. So this offset is just gonna help keep that arm of the upper arm away from those bolt heads. So it's never gonna hit there. But arms itself is super strong. This whole cavity is connected to each other. As you can see, they all line up with that drain hole as I do have a drain hole on this upper bracket. So if you're parked on a hill and water collects in there, it actually has somewhere to go. It's just not gonna sit in that upper arm and rust out. So you don't have to worry about that. I have this cross brace going down and that actually lines up with an interior brace on that arm. So those connect to each other, but I have this brace in here just so this can take any freaking impact of what you wanna throw on it. It's gonna stay super rigid. There's nothing that's gonna distort this lower arm to make anything move, loose, loosen up, or just not get you home at the end of the day. So that's in there, extremely strong. Of course you have this design just to fit the socket in there. And then I just kind of extended that a little bit more. I'm probably gonna weld this on on my frame, but six bolts all together. There's just nothing that's gonna keep this from giving you a problem. From that bracket, I did lower this bolt hole. So the bolt hole itself, center line, the center line, it is three quarters of an inch lower than that bracket. And then the overall 
drop of this. So the whole bracket itself is about a half inch lower than what that bracket is. So I'm not really using losing ground clearance. I needed to change the angles up just a tad and I'll get into that once I mount everything in there and I get the axle into there of why I lowered this a little bit more and why that was more ideal for my setup and kind of go into the geometry a little bit on that aspect. But that's it. Those are my arms. I'm going to finish bolting up that one to the side of the frame. And just before I end this video, I'll show you what this looks like on this side. And there it is.